Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our routine today. We have a few props to go through. So we have rolled mat. Those of you who have been with us for the last few weeks will be familiar with this. If you haven't got two mats, then you just roll your own mat. Two bricks. We haven't to be using these larger wooden bricks, but whatever you've got at home will be fine. And if you haven't got bricks, you can always take your hands to the seat of a chair for the forward bending actions. I'm sitting on a couple of foam pads here. Those would be useful if you don't have foam pads, folded blankets, towels, or you might not actually need any support. Okay, so we're going to start on the mat. Um, and as Leo has already mentioned, those of you who are following the channel, you will um, be familiar with this. We're starting with just feeling the spine, lying down, and just getting a little bit of movement, a little bit more pliability in the spine by using this prop. It's a very easy prop to use. We just lie, become quite weighted onto the prop, and we just very, very slowly manipulate the spine. It's a really nice way of trying to get some sensitivity there. And of course, we work the spine with working our limbs really well. But in this way, we can access it and become a little bit more conscious of what's going on. Where's the tightness? Where do we need to apply a little bit more weighted pressure? It's a very, very nice way. So hopefully most of you are on your old mat and just moving side to side, just getting that little bit of manipulation there. And then once you've actually manipulated, palpated the spinal region, just become very weighted, become weighted and let the spine start to release a little bit. So this is very important, we're coming into a twist very shortly, so it's really important that you have a little bit of pliability in your spinal muscles. Remember, we get a little bit set in our spine from the twist in our hips, everybody, well, most people have a slight twist in their hips, and that has a knock-on effect all the way through the spine. So this is a very good practice, a little bit of an exercise, we would call it essential preparatory action, that just getting familiar with what's going on in the spinal region. So once you have become a little bit more pliable in your spines, then we roll to the right side, yes? My apologies, we have to do some work there. <laughs> All right, so we're coming into um, Upper Vista Kamasana. So this is a wide-legged angle seated pose. And you can see Leo still using this rolled mat and she's going to sit on this to give that lift to the base of the spine. So it's a very nice way of working. You can also use a couple of foam pads, a brick, to sit on or sit on the floor, but just be careful of sitting on the floor that you're not um, dropping your lower spine. We use a lot of these props um, to bring a bit more sensation into the body. So we're trying to drive some life into areas which are um, sleeping, which are sleeping, so we use these props. So as you can see here, Leo's got the bricks underneath her hands to push up very strongly. So we have to be a little bit careful with this action because already there is a drop to the forward side. So all of this, actually come forward a little bit there, Leo. All of this has got to be done from the legs. So here, this area has got to actually find that grounded action this way, that way, and then you have support for the rest of the body. Now, as this is grounding down in this way, the hip bone starts to lift up. You feel the difference there now. So you're trying to make this space for this hinge to work. And it will sometimes get very tight in those um, leg ligament so this is a very good posture it's very easy to push the ribs out to push the chest forward but we have to see that the stacking is as good as we can get it so keeping that lift keeping grounded into the legs and just do a little bit of a scan as we would in tadasana mountain pose so we would be sure there's a sharpness in the foot see that the rim of the heel is moving deeply into the floor side, 
pulling up the kneecaps, pulling up the thighs, lifting up through the center of the body. And go and see that you're getting that breadth and broadness in the upper body too. Elbows going back and encourage that action with that soft elbow to lift even more in the armpit chest and breathe. So you can stay in this pose for a couple of minutes just observing different areas of your body, being sure that you're getting that lift and then it's not any short circuits like the ribs overextending forward. We've got to see that we're going up from inside, from the base, from the base and then release them. So I mentioned about um, we were coming into a twist, we're coming for Ardha Mats in Jasana. So a challenging twist. This is when we sit on the foot. Now we do have um, a pose directory of this pose, so if you're not sure of it, then just have a look at the pose directory and all the different ways you can actually work in it. So you can see here, Leo is getting ready to sit on her foot. The foot is sharp, you're on the foot bone, and then you're going to sit on the foot as if it's like cup and saucer. So you have one buttock onto the heel and the other buttock onto the big toe joint, and you just get used to sitting. So you might find if you've got really tight feet, that this is quite painful to start with. So there are variations that you can practice. You can have the foot in Virasana, and if you're not quite sure, then take a look at that pose directory on Ardha Matsyandrasana. So taking your right leg over your left, and just see that you keep that lift, keep that nice lift. So when we were talking about the spine and getting that manipulation, we've got to see that actually we get this turning action from the base. And we can do this by bringing the front leg towards our bodies and then hooking that left arm around. So you can see this. Now, this stage is really important because we're bringing that leg towards the body itself and we're just getting a little bit more pliability in the outer hips and the groins. And this is where this pose gets really tricky. Those of you who can, hook the left arm over the right thigh and then taking the back hand back. So seeing if you can take to the floor or to a brick, if you've got a brick handy, it may be that you need a brick. So, so often we complete the pose and go up, but we need to sit into the back pelvis a little before we go up. So a little bit like our Orpavista Kanasana, and then from there, get the lift. Yes, but it's quite often the spine will lift from the middle, <laughs> not the face. So we have to be a little bit careful of this, and then keeping that extension and opening. So this is really the beginning of Ardha Matsyandrasana and then releasing. Straighten the legs. So you may find you need to straighten the legs out in a good Dandasana because you find that actually it's quite difficult on the foot. You want to stretch those feet out because you've been sitting on the foot. Um, so sitting in Dandasana is a very good um, way of releasing that. Okay, so now we take the right foot and we sit on the right foot and lift it up. So you may find that one foot is better than the other. <laughs> one foot is easy, it goes in quite nicely and the other foot is a little bit stiffer, a little bit more difficult to, to work with. Okay, lifting up nicely. Rolling your shoulders back and down. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, now we're going to take the leg over the Virasana level. It's not quite Virasana, but we have to see that you get that pulling into the chest with the top leg again. And just take your time with this. So if this is the stage where you come to and you find that that's plenty enough, 
then you can work at this stage for a little while. Or if you can take that arm over the thigh, then do so, hook it. And then start to take the back hand back. You need to put your hand onto the brick, that's quite useful. And again, pause on the rotation, sit back into the pelvis, and then go right up from the sacral area, right up. Sometimes we push so much that we create so much tension in this twist. And for it to rinse well, all of those spine muscles, then sometimes we have to bring a little bit of a grounded element, a little bit of softness in the base, so that we can then apply a little bit more energy to create that lift. And then release it. Straighten your legs and come back to Dandasana. So we're going to come into a standing position now, which is Uttita Hasta Padangushtasana. Now we do have a pose directory on this. So those of you who are not quite sure of the pose and you'd like to look at different ways of practicing, then do take a look at that. We're going to be working to the wall now, so we're going to take the foot up onto the wall because although we have these ropes here which would be much easier for us to put the foot onto a bolt, we know that a lot of you won't have this facility. So coming up, standing up. Now you can find a ledge or a chair to put your foot onto. Um, so what we're going to do is to Stand facing the wall and then taking the right leg up onto the wall and place. Good. So what we're going to also do is to try to catch that foot. So this is going to be quite challenging. So what you're going to do is to bend the front leg and come towards the foot and see if you can hold the foot. So you're going to have to bring the foot a little bit, yeah, a little bit closer to you. That's it. So the whole foot is coming away. And then see, are you able to straighten the leg? So this is the challenging bit. Are you able to straighten the leg? So if the leg is not straightening, then you see, oh, it's such a challenging action to practice. So this is what we're looking for is to get that connection with the lift of the body and the pulling back of the leg deeply into the socket and then release it. It's a very challenging action. So usually we would use the belt for this but we're coming a little bit closer to the classic pose. So taking the left leg up onto the wall and then softening the knee, softening the knee and come forward to catch. So when we come forward to catch, as a challenge in action, then to straighten. But what it prevents you doing is to straighten the leg with the knee. What we have to do is to become very deep in the hip socket. So the creases of the front thigh need to become very deep. The pulling back of the outer thigh needs to be very deep. The lengthening of the back pelvis needs to be very long and deep. And then we come up through the center of the body, lifting up through the chest and breathe at the same time. So this is a really good way to start Uttita Hastapadangashtasana coming closer to the classic pose. And there are variations of this, and please do have a look at our pose directory. And then release in. Okay, so it's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not my favourite pose, it has to be said, but very useful. It's very useful. Now we're coming into the uh, Pavrita action of Uttita Hastapadangashtasana. So we're coming for the same again. So we're going to take the leg up onto the wall. Now I always find this a little bit easier, actually. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Well, we're just going to do a modified version. So taking the leg up onto the wall and pause in there. Lifting up through the centre of the body. Now reaching up with your left arm and turning. Now you want to take this arm to the outer side of the thigh and this hand to the sacrum. Now again, 
this area pulls back, this area of the crease deepens, so this becomes long. So it is Uttita Hasta Padangashtasana for the spine, for the spine, not for the legs. So we have to use those legs to get that access to the spine and therefore we have to oil these hinges in lots of different ways to get that lift through the centre and then release them. So it puts so many demands on our body when we come into some of these uh, deep hip actions. Left um, leg lifted and then extending up through the centre of the body, reaching up with the arm and then getting that turning action and hold it and then taking the hand. So we're coming into this twisted action. This is slightly modified to, to the leg across, which we also do practice. Go and see that you take the crease of the thigh very deeply down, lengthening through the spine, lifting up and turning, getting that turn. And also, don't forget to breathe as well. Enjoy. And then release it. Okay, standing in Tadasana, just taking a few moments. Just taking a few moments. Now, we're coming for Vrujasana, so this is standing on one leg, so it's always good when we come to the balances, but quite often it can be challenging, again, even in this position, so I'm moving these props out of the way so that Leo can take her elbows to the wall if she needs to, um, so move that a little bit further up, that's it. So this is quite a nice way of working, just having that one behind you and just getting that action of lift. So remember, with all balancing, you want to be sure that that pelvis is lifting in an upward direction. So these hip bones need to be lifting up. And then we're going to take the right leg to the inner thigh of the left. So some of you will be familiar with this action. And again, we do have a pose directly on Vrakshasana. So you'll be able to see different ways of working. But those of you who are able to stay in this position for a little while, see that you keep that length through the centre of the body and then we're working to try to get this side moving a little bit towards the wall side and that's not just turning the hips, you don't want to do that, we can all do a little bit of a, a fling to the side, we have to work the groin, we have to work those thighs. So the best way to get the space in the joint is to weight the thigh towards the floor side. So get that direction of weighting that bent leg, portion it towards the floor side, and then see if it just nudges back a little bit. From there, if you're able to reach those arms up, then do so. Reaching up through the center of the body. And breathe. Yeah. So this is really a, a beautiful action. Be sure that there is that strong connection with the foot and the inner thigh and you're going up and then really sit and so we'll do the other side. This is quite a challenging um, sequence but it's a really nice sequence because it's got a lot of variation in it. Really good to challenge um, as beginners to practice in this way. And then taking the left leg to the thigh so if you find that your foot slips, again, we, we do show different ways of working in this pose, particularly with a belt, that's a very good way of working. So go and see that your elbows move towards the wall and use the elbows as that little bit of um, a connection, very informative to get, get that body lifting. And then see that you get that lift and extend the arms up, yes. So keep your balance, reaching up. It's a challenging action, particularly when the hips are stiff. But just have a go at this in this way. There's no rush to get the arms up. Very good to get the lift through the center of the body and then releasing it down. Okay, standing in Tadasana, roll your shoulders back and down and just take a few breaths to recover. Can I just say that at the centre, we quite often wear shorts. Oh yes, we do. Well, we all wear shorts in the centre. And uh, doing this pose wearing lycra leggings is a bit of a challenge because your feet slip on lycra, don't they? Yeah, they do. 
they do. It's, it is challenging, it's better on the skin, mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. But do have a look at our tutorial because we go through all the different ways of working. We're coming for Autumnasana, so if you've been following us over the last few weeks, then you'll be familiar. We're going to take the legs nice and wide. Um, those of you going on to the inversions, we're tagging that on to the end of the video. So hinging forward, and then folding your arms and releasing the spine down. And then let the head release down. So as we are coming into this position, we've got to see that the tailbone is grounded. We're not just falling. The tailbone is grounded, the skin is falling for sure, but the tailbone is keeping us really steady and stable. All the poses actually are very much about keeping that stability in the hips, in the pelvis itself. Um, what we sometimes hold on to actually does restrict us. So be sure that the framework is solid, but the soft tissue fiber is fluid, very key. And then releasing and coming up. So come up slowly, no um, rushed actions from having your head down and just be there for a few moments. Just take a few breaths. Roll your shoulders back and down. Yes, it's always so good to come back to our Tadasana. This is when we truly digest our practice. Okay, we're just going to be coming into a seated position for those of you who are um, finishing your practice and you're not going on to the inversions, then just sit in a seated position for a few moments. So we hope you enjoyed our sequence today. And if you do like the sequence, remember to click on the like button. Uh, if you want to get notifications of when new videos are coming out, then uh, subscribe and allow the notifications. It's quite straightforward to do that. If you have any comments, remember, do contact us. We try and get back and re reply to all the comments, even if we don't do it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so, those who are staying on for the inversions, just wait for a moment. That will be coming on to the end of this sequence in a few seconds. We're back again, but this time with the inversions. So if some of you have been uh, following the sequence in and joining the inversions onto the sequence, then you will need to have something for your head to come up into Shishasana and the platform for Savangasana. So Shishasana, head balance, Savangasana, shoulder balance. These are ones that you're going to be doing if you've learnt them in your class with your teacher. Okay, so we're just going to go through a few basic instru instructions. This is just to help with the alignment and um, the base of the pose, but as Leo said, you need to be practicing this to be coming into your Shishasana. Okay, so kneeling down, interrupting your fingers, and coming into this class. Now, the biggest mistake with this pose is this. A lot of people put their head here and clasp their hands together. So, if you know that you do this and you're going to be changing the way you're clasping, then just be careful because, of course, whenever you change anything in your changing direction, it can make you a little bit unstable. But what's really important is that you make this flexibility, you create a flexibility. You can see here that Leo's arms flatten down really nicely, the forearms. If you just have a look here, I'm going to show you the forearm on Leo here. This area gets very, very tight. On Leo, it's really nice and soft. In this area here, you've got to work at getting that nice and soft so that you can get the bones down and really ground down. So it's a very important action. And then, 
You're going to just let the head go down, but not to the floor completely. Just let it, you're just bowing the head. Tuck the toes under, keep the head off the floor. And tuck the toes under and lift the knees up. And just let the head release down naturally. So that's what you need, that really nice length in the neck. And then coming into the action. Now how we're going to come into the action today is to really take the front body to the back body, soften the knees, and we're going to come into this bent leg action you can see here. So this is really quite challenging. And then very, very slowly unfold the legs. So ground down into the arms and extend the legs up very slowly. So what's really key here, you can see that Leo is going slowly, she's active in her, in her feet, she's active through her body. Now the centre buttocks got to move in, just going to walk around to just see that Leo is in a good position here. And then we just lift the lower leg up, lower leg up, that's it. And you see it's a very, very slow process, don't rush it. Extend right up into the heels, and we've got to find this rolling in action of the thighs. So, rolling the thighs in, seeing that you're grounding down from the base and getting that energy lifting up. So, it's slightly different to Tadasana in, in direction, but the same quality of alignment. So, see that the back of the pelvis moves towards the left side and then grounding down very strongly in the wrists, spreading the toes, soft inhalation and exhalation. So if you're practicing this as a beginner, then work through your timer, one minute, two minute, three minute, until you can come up to eight to 10 minutes. Of course, we're not going to be showing you that amount of time, but just being in the pose for as long as you can hold it but see that it's a quality action as soon as you start to lose that alignment in the pose then it start to calm down now we're coming out of the pose because we're just showing you the practice and if you stay a little bit longer then do so or look to the video for Savagasana and then start your inversions okay so Leo's going to come down with control in the same way as she came into the pose. So soft knees, keeping that lift through the thighs, and then just bringing those legs in towards the body. It's a really challenging action. And then once you get all of that lift, the lower leg will take you to the floor. You can see that action. And then just releasing back down and releasing the buttocks onto your heels and stretching the arms forward and just being there. Take your time, don't get up too quickly, just take a few breaths. If you're still in Shishasana, then um, try and maintain all of those actions and the alignment. We're coming on to Savangasana now. So we're going to move this mat and bring this new prop base into our view. So we're going to just pop this here, that's it. All right, I just want to go through a few things with this action. So when you come into this um, Preparation, you can see here, Leo's yeah, just taking a little bit of time coming into the action. Now, what a lot of people go wrong on the platform is to have the shoulders a little bit too close to the edge. If you do, quite often when you roll over, you end up rolling off the support. So if you're not used to using the platform, I would highly recommend to use the platform because um, this really does support the shoulders and frees the neck. Um, but it's important that you get in a good place. You, you, you're not rolling off and you are actually still on the platform when you come into Halasana. Now when you come into Halasana, lots of people um, practice this in different ways. You can push your hands down to get a little bit of momentum 
I tend to sink my hands into this position and just place them underneath the tailbone and this just gives me a little lift to push up. So however you go, Leo's doing the same thing and then roll you over, just find that really helps and your arms are in this position then. And you want to see that you really lengthen those arm fibers by extending those arms away from you, keeping the length in the legs. Remember, in this pose, you're trying to create space in the back, so you need to roll the whole of the, the lower back towards the buttocks so that you make space to put your hands. Now, when you take your hands onto your spine, you've got to keep this area grounded down the upper arm and place the hands. So you can see that Leo is using her skin, her flesh, for her hands. It's a really important action. And the fingers are facing towards one another. And this is another thing we see quite a lot, is that the hands end up like that. That is not where we want to be. We want to turn the hands so that we are supporting. Ground very strongly into those upper arms and then one leg and the other come up. Yes. And then bring the leg up. So when you're in the pose, again, we want to see that the middle buttock goes in, but we want to get as much lift as possible. So you have to reach through those legs. It's so important in this pose to reach through those legs and lighten the extension through the body. So keeping that action, be sure that you're getting this slight rotation with the thighs. And again, the middle buttock, keep checking the middle buttock moves in strongly and you're extending up. Let the breath be smooth and even. And again, we're looking for long stays in this pose eventually. So we may be doing now head balance our shishasana for five minutes and then we come to our savangasana for 10 minutes so normally double the time so a lot to build up to if you're just starting out in your inversions when you're practicing your savangasana it's really important to keep the throat soft the facial features soft although there's a lot going on we have to see that there's a uh, there's a softness as well when you're practicing. We do have tutorials on these poses which will show you easier ways of approaching them or the very beginning of your inversions. So we would normally say your inversions would come once you've mastered a little bit of the standing poses, built up strength and stamina and um, yeah, I had a bit of practice, you're understanding the leg work before you start coming into these poses. So if you're staying in your Savanasana stay, we're coming out of this pose now, we're coming into Halasana, and then Leo will be rolling down into her supine recovery position. You can see it's all very beautifully controlled, and then taking the other leg down. very nicely done and then slowly releasing down so we've got the crash pad here which is the launch pad which is really i would recommend to anybody to bring that floor level up so that you don't have a bang down with the buttocks really important that you you have that and just taking this launch pad underneath the head and wait for a few moments. So a few deep and longer inclinations, recover from your inversions, don't just get straight up and out of them, recover for a few moments. Okay, so what we're going to do now is come into Shavasana. So we're going to, I'm going to help Leo do this, but if you're doing it by yourself, you're going to roll to your right side. But what I'm going to ask Leo to do is just lift her up a body. I'm going to turn this support round like this, and then it's just going to go back onto the support, and then rest the head. It's really nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then just lift her head a little bit so that I can go under there. That's great. 
So line them up, take the feet a little bit towards me, that's it, this way, that's it. Okay, so just be in this position. And what's really nice about this platform being turned in this way, it just is right. It supports the spine really nicely. And for those of you who wish to, then straighten the legs with a little bit of resistance, pushing those legs away in this position. So when we come for Shavasana, this is a time where we just need to put that pause button on and scan the body. So never be in a rush with this, this pose. As Stein always says, it's one of the hardest poses to practice. So we can forget about taking our leg around our head. This is the one that really we have to work and engage with. This is when we find out that peace, quietness, stillness, and try to bring this into our lives. So, scanning the body from the facial features, be sure that you're softening around the facial features, softening the eyes, the temples, softening around the forehead, between the eyebrows. Let the back teeth be apart, soften the throat, and soften the abdomen. Just be sure that the arms are rolling out so that the palms are facing up. And lastly, if you haven't already, just let those feet fall apart. And just let the body start to unfold. Take your observations to the tip of the nose. So just take that glance towards the tip of the nose and be aware that your breath is through your nostrils. So a soft inhalation and a soft exhalation. And again, like the inversions, if you wish to stay here for a little bit longer, then do so. We're going to start to come out of our shavasana. We would recommend you do at least five to ten minutes of this pose. So Leo is going to slowly bend her knees, take her hands towards the body, and roll towards the right side. And then slowly coming up into a seated position. So we hope you enjoyed our inversion video. Please do practice the inversions if you already are practicing and we look forward to seeing you next time. Namaste. Namaste.